In a previous video, I started the process of adding cooling fans to an OEM panel that sits in front of my amplifier rack. In this video, we're gonna get all of the different pieces bonded together. We're going to do some body filler to smooth things out, and we're going to get this upholstered. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. Let's design, build, and install. Before we start adding the body filler on this panel, I did wanna update you guys on a couple of things that have changed since the first video. So first of all, on this panel, there used to be a bunch of the hot melt adhesive from the factory that had the factory carpet stuck to it. And some of you guys actually mentioned, and I didn't even know this, that you can take isopropyl alcohol, AKA rubbing alcohol, and you can kind of let it sit on the surface and just let it sit for like 10 minutes. And then when you come in and start to rub it off, you can actually get that hot melt adhesive to detach just using that isopropyl alcohol. I had no idea that that was even a thing. It definitely still took some time, but this surface, even though it looks pretty marked up, it's actually pretty nice and smooth, which is going to be good underneath our carpet. The other thing I changed is in the first video, I had this insert here that I was going to use. I like the look of this, but I feel like it's a little bit too plain. And the one major drawback is it doesn't actually protect the fins of the fan from being touched or from something going in there and hurting the fan. So I come up with this design instead. This way I have a little bit of grill on here. And I did use clear acrylic for this. And I asked you guys why I used clear acrylic. And a lot of you guys thought it was because I was going to use some sort of LED lighting, but it's actually a different reason that I'll show you guys later in the video. The other thing I did in between videos is I took a piece of the scrap plastic that I had cut out from here and then I took a scrap piece of acrylic and I tested some different adhesives to see which one was going to work the best. Unfortunately these two epoxy options didn't really work all that well. I was able to pry the little disc of acrylic off but this stuff here this is something new that I tried. It's definitely a CA glue but it's made specifically for plastics. They call it plastics bonder. I'll put a link to this down in the video description. I found that this works really, really well with this special activator. It kind of acts as a primer that you put on the plastic before you apply the glue. It's super hard to detach these, so that's what I'm gonna be using to attach the two together. I use the plastic bonder primer around the outside edges and in areas that the two different types of plastic material are actually going to be sandwiched against each other. I then follow up with adding the adhesive itself in those areas and then pressing these pieces together. Now around the outside here, I need to add a little bit more strength with a different type of glue. And for this, I'm just using standard CA glue. The reason for that being, I know that standard CA glue adheres really well to the acrylic. It adheres to this type of plastic still, but not as well as it does with the acrylic. The reason that's not a big concern is I've made my acrylic panel nice and thick, which allows it to stick out not only on the front side, but also on the back side. And the reason that that is helpful is you can see I've added a bead of CA glue there and there on each side. So what that does, since that CA glue is bonding really, really well to the acrylic, it kind of creates a sandwich around this unknown type of plastic. And that gives us a mechanical hold on each side. Under normal conditions, we don't have to worry about it breaking free. It's plenty strong enough for us to move into the body filler phase. To prepare for the body filler phase, I really don't want any body filler on this surface here or to accidentally get on the inside of these rings that we're going to be seeing in the finished project. So I just cut this little piece out here. It matches the same shape of my insert and I cut it out of this chipboard type material. I can just tape it in from the back side here to help protect and that way we don't have to be super careful about laying our body filler on. If it gets in here, no big deal. The other thing I do to prepare pair is I just drill a ton of these little holes around the outside edge and I want to drill them in a spot that is going to be underneath the fillet of material that I'm going to add with the body filler and what this does is the body filler can kind of flow through there and create a plug on the back side so it has almost a mechanical hold as well I don't have to rely on the body filler getting a super good bite into this material even though I did rough it up around the outsides here to give it a chance at a better bite. I don't have to worry about it as much because of that mechanical hold. The body filler I'm gonna use is the good old favorite right here, Evercoat Rage Gold. It goes on really nice and smooth and it's extremely easy to sand. Let's get it on.
Now, while the body filler is curing, I do want to take a quick second to thank our monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control, and show you guys this. This is the new Audio Control ACX line of amplifiers, which is Audio Control's all weather amplifier. In this lineup, there's the mono block amplifier that gives us 300 watts of output at two ohms, and there's also the four channel version here. This gives us 50 watts times four at four ohms or 75 watts times four at two ohms. What's special about these amps though is they are IPX6 rated, which makes them perfect for ATVs, motorcycles, Jeeps if you're gonna have the top down, snowmobiles, heck, even hot air balloons. But the other thing that's really cool here is they have these harness plugs that come with it. So if you do need to be able to service this amp and quickly take it in and out, a lot of times that's hard on something really compact like a motorcycle. You don't wanna be going all the way and you know unfishing all of this wiring. It's really nice to have plugs plugs and with this amp you have them right there to learn more about these new amplifiers check out the link down in the video description now even after showing you that amplifier i do need to still give that body filler a little bit more time to cure so i started doing this here the reason i made this insert out of clear acrylic is because i'm applying a paint job to the back side i'm going with a black and silver wood grain type look to match the interior of the vehicle by painting the back side of the clear acrylic, we immediately have a super glossy finish on the opposite side once we peel away that protective paper. You can see how glossy and nice this looks. So now we've given the body filler enough time to cure so we can start the sanding process. Now something key here is when you're sanding something like a fillet, it's going to have a consistent curvature. You don't necessarily want to use your thumb and have an inconsistent curvature as you adjust your thumb on the sandpaper. So it is optimal to use something like this. I like using these soft sanders they have this curvature to them and they can kind of form because they're made out of this foam can kind of form to the shape that you really need them but I find that this gives a lot more of a consistent look and a lot better finish results on the back side of the panel you can see why we added all those holes the body filler has come through and made a plug allowing it to further bond to the panel Another important thing about body filler is you don't want to over sand. I could keep sanding, sanding here until I get rid of these dark spots. But the problem is when I laid this body filler in, it didn't fully fill up this large amount of space. So rather than spending a bunch of time sanding for something that I'm just going to need to fill again, I'd rather just stop, fill it in again, and then repeat the sanding process. Another thing to point out, a good reason for using acrylic like I did for this ring as opposed to wood is acrylic is much more difficult to sand. So we know we want to keep the acrylic perfect so we can easily sand up to it with our sandpaper and we're not going to really burn into it and damage the shape. If it was made out of wood, it'd be really easy to kind of damage that shape and not have that nice crisp edge. So off camera, I'm going to repeat the body filler process and repeat sanding until this is good. So after a couple more times of filling and then sanding and getting this nice and smooth, we are looking good. We are ready for upholstery. To prepare for upholstery, again, I have this protected here with a piece of chip board so I don't get any upholstery adhesive where I don't want it. I've also protected this bottom edge with tape here because a factory panel sits into here so I don't want it covered with that adhesive. I've got my carpet ready to go. We're going with a black carpet that matches the interior carpet of the vehicle. I've got some of my upholstery tools laid out and then I have my favorite upholstery adhesive loaded up and ready to go. The way that this contact adhesive works is we have to apply it to both surfaces and allow it to dry. Once it's fully dry, then it will stick to itself so we can then stick the carpet to the panel. I'm going to take my time here with carefully smoothing the carpet onto the panel because once I do apply pressure with the contact adhesive, it will lock in place permanently. I go around the edges carefully and smooth everything out. And then the next step here is I can go ahead and I can cut out that inside piece of carpet from the insert. Now this is the step I was looking forward to. I wanted to peel away the protective paper from the acrylic and see how this looks. This looks killer. And we have to take it a step further. Let's do a quick test fit of the protective grill insert. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. This is going to look so awesome once it's done. Now that the carpet is trimmed, this is starting to look more like the OEM panel originally did. Obviously with a little bit of modification now, let's get the fans and our little USB mounted.
So I've got the little controller completely installed here and completely wired to our fans and it's running them. This little guy right here, this is the thermocouple. I'll put this close to the amplifiers. And what this does is it monitors how hot the amplifiers are. And as the amplifiers warm up, it will ramp up the speed of these fans. These fans are actually currently on right now and they are incredibly quiet. I'll just be quiet for a second here. You cannot hear them really at all. Even when I do heat up the thermocouple and get these up to full speed, they're still incredibly quiet. No concerns about hearing them inside the cabin. So in the next part of this project, we need to get this panel reinstalled into the vehicle and connect it. If you missed it, I just uploaded a video the other day of building this custom subwoofer enclosure for our entry level base build. To see that video, you can check out the link here on screen and I'd love to have you as a subscriber so that you can see future videos. To learn more about the Audio Control ACX line of amplifiers, check out the link down in the video description. And a special thanks to Lonnie, Ali, William, Marcos, and Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you for watching.